Hello everyone and welcome back to Slothlord Reviews. Today we are going to be looking at Death Stranding, a game developed by Kojima Productions, with this being their debut since Kojima's departure from Konami in 2015. November had a lot of hot releases this year, and I like to try and at least do one new game a month, if there's any that I feel like reviewing, and Death Stranding seemed like it might have the most to talk about. I was really tempted to do Pokemon Sword or Sealed, or even the new Star Wars game, but Death Stranding seemed like an interesting challenge for me to dive into. That being said, I don't think I can really talk about this game without spoiling a few things. I will try my best to avoid anything major, but there really is a lot to unpack here. And for full transparency, I haven't actually beaten this game yet. I've been pretty busy since the game's release, and I also got sick as well, so I haven't had the time or energy to really explore things. But I did make it a point to at least watch all the cinematics, and I plan to play the game fairly casually from this point on, so I have seen the story and everything it has to offer, and we're going to talk about that in a bit. But first, I want to talk about kind of the setting. So this game is essentially notorious for being weird or hard to understand, and I actually think that's not the case if you pay attention to how the world works. The way this world operates makes a lot of sense if you actually look at it with a few things in mind. But before I talk about why I think it makes sense, I'm going to go over a few phrases and describe them. The first term is BT, which stands for Beached Things. These creatures are incredibly dangerous, mysterious, and invisible unless you have a certain level of dooms. Dooms is a rare ability one might have that can affect how they would experience a BT. There are various levels of dooms. Sam Porter Bridges, our main character, is level 2, so he can sense them, but he can't see them. This means he needs a BB, or a bridge baby. These guys can see BTs, so they are used as a tool mostly for non-dooms people so they may avoid dying. However, dying isn't a big deal to Sam because he's known as a repatriate. This means that upon death he can return to his body from a place called the Seam, which seems to be linked to the beach. That's not to say that there's no consequences for Sam dying. If he's killed by a BT, then there's a reaction known as a void out, and the surrounding area will be decimated. You can't win them all, I guess. I mentioned beaches, and I think it's best described as a purgatory, or more accurately, the River Styx, which is the passage to the underworld in Greek mythology. There are certain elements about beaches I'm a bit confused about, but that could be because I may have missed important information somewhere. Timefall is probably the thing I understand the least, but essentially it's a type of rain that speeds up time. If you are caught in the timefall, then you will age rapidly. It seems to surround BTs mostly, and this game centers around extinction, so it all comes together as a force we know as EE, or Extinction Entity, that is trying to bring about the end of the world. It's pretty interesting, I definitely feel like there's certain allegories to several things like global warming. All of this stuff is explained further as you progress through the story. I went in not knowing much and felt that the game explains it fairly well. In fact, sometimes I don't think the game is subtle enough. Yes, there's still a lot I need explained, but I couldn't help but feel characters will tell you something moments after you piece it together yourself. So what is this game even about? Well, as I said, you are Sam Porter Bridges, you are a delivery boy with dooms and also are a repatriate. This makes you incredibly valuable because you literally can do what others can't. The President of the United States, who is known to be your mother, is unfortunately dying and her dying wish is for you to reconnect America. Good luck with that. You also need to find Amelie, who is your sister, as she is seen as the next person who can fill her mother's shoes. You are to do this with the aid of several characters, which I will break them down for you now. First up is Die Hard Man, he's currently calling the shots and likes to remind you that there's always more work to do. Then we have Dead Man, who is modeled after one of my favorite film directors, Guillermo del Toro. He serves as your medical advisor and takes an interest in the BB that was given to you. There is also Heart Man, who is also a repatriate. He deems himself as the beach expert, just like any dad on vacation. Fragile is another delivery person with the useful power of teleportation. She's very odd and mysterious, but offers her allegiance throughout the game. And lastly, I want to mention Mama, who is a tech genius. So, with all of these characters and their fields of specialties, 
you all have to work together to unravel the Death Stranding. The stories and the characters are amazing, some of the best performances and storytelling I've ever seen in a video game. While I was watching the cutscenes, I was just always infested and my mind couldn't stop blowing over how crazy and emotional this game is. There's so much depth and thought put into the story, and I never expected less from Kojima. There's a reason he's got a lot of supporters. I talk a lot about how stories never really wow me in a lot of the games I review, but this is the one to do it. There are plenty of things I was satisfied with because I wanted to see it happen, then on top of that I got things I didn't even know I wanted until it happened. There's about 9-10 to 10 hours just in cutscenes, and I'm not ashamed to say I watched it all in one sitting. I didn't even have stuff going on in the background like I usually do either. I was fully immersed. That's not to say that this story is perfect because nothing is, but a lot of the things that don't add up are in heavy spoilers and I don't want to take anything away from anyone here. But as good as the story is, there's a lot of cutscenes, so if that is a turnoff for you, then unfortunately you might not be able to enjoy the best part of this game. Because the part that doesn't exactly hold up is the gameplay. Now I want to clarify, I respect the heck out of the mechanics. They're very intuitive and unique, but unfortunately there's a massive gameplay loop that you'll find yourself in. And if you're too caught up in the, you're just a delivery boy, lol, then I think you've already made up your mind about this game. Yes, the Prime Directive is to deliver. You take packages and you deliver them, but it's still more than just that. There's a pseudo-strategy aspect to this because you gotta maintain several conditions, such as time, damage on the package, or there's BTs or mules who are former porters who have gone cuckoo for cargo puffs, and you gotta make sure that you're not straining yourself. This game really tries to be different, and if we condemn it because it's different, then why bother making anything if it has to be the same? This game clearly has a goal, and I get why it is the way it's presented. It's meant to be abrasive, it takes such a mundane premise and expands upon it. Don't get me wrong, I don't find it fun, but I don't know if that's even the point anyways. Playing a game for fun makes nothing but sense, of course. You want to have a good time. But that doesn't mean that fun is always the goal, what if someone wants the option to do something they might otherwise be incapable of? It might sound like I'm trying to defend this, but I myself find it exhausting, but I find the outer worlds just as exhausting. I've fallen out of certain aspects with video games, I like more linear experiences now, but I still find the gameplay just as interesting. I have certain complicated feelings for the gameplay, but it functions smoothly and really does some things that I've never seen before, and that's commendable. I hope Kojima keeps trying to be different because innovation is breeding grounds for creativity, and a chance to inspire others to want to follow that same path is what it's all about, and that's what I like about the gameplay. So let's summarize. Death Stranding has a breathtaking and mind-blowing story. Its setting is very interesting because of its blend of science fiction and paranormal. While it's not a game I see myself playing often, I definitely will be picking it up from time to time. So do I recommend this game? That's really hard to say. To a casual audience, no, not at all. But to someone who wants something truly different and has an open mind, then check this out, it very well could be your next favorite game, even if it's not mine. So there it is, be sure to follow me on Twitch, I stream Monday through Friday and have several highlights if you want to see the sloth in its natural habitat. Otherwise I upload my highlights here on YouTube in smaller segments for your viewing pleasure, but I have a lot of stuff to get through so it might take me a while. Be sure to follow me on Twitter as well, because I really want to start a community and get like-minded individuals together to talk about our favorite games. I have a project that I'm working on with my pal Could Be Rook, so be sure to follow him on Twitch as well. If all goes well, then it'll be on my channel late January of 2020, and from there I hope to make it a monthly thing. Well, that is going to do it for today. Please be sure to like, comment, and subscribe, and tune in next week when I cover Man of Meaden. I'm Slothlord, and I will see you all next time.